Welcome to Frequency Matters, the RF Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host, Eric Heim. This episode, we're going to cover our September EW, Radar, and Milcom Supplement. The lead story is written by Perfesis, and they cover FPGAs and SDRs for Radar, EW, and Milcom applications, so it's a perfect fit for this issue. We actually just recorded our seventh episode of BNS on Aerospace and Defense, and we cover the SDR topic, so look for that releasing next week. Eric, what do we have for other uh, technical features? Thanks, Pat. Uh, we had an interesting article from Fortify that looks at how recent advances in low dielectric constant and low loss resins have opened the door to creating tunable dielectric lattice structures that can be used and added to manufacturing applications. Uh, so that article addresses some of the challenges and test methods being used in that space. It's part one of a two-parter. So it closes with some responses from industry experts to some of the most pressing questions being faced in additive manufacturing. And as a bit of a tease, look for part two of that article in an upcoming issue where we'll get more input from those experts. Uh, we also had an article from Nullspace discussing EM simulation challenges for RF technologies. Uh, the premise of that article is that as the world goes towards electrically large and complex devices. So think massive MIMO antennas in wireless or uh, AESA radars in defense. EM solvers require large amounts of computational resources and lots of time uh, to get to an accurate model. So the article discusses some of the techniques and features that Null Space has incorporated into their solutions and how that translates to improvements in accuracy and cycle time. And they've got some good examples of modeling electrically large structures. And so our, for our product feature, we had digitally enabled RF building blocks that address emerging EW system needs by spectrum control. And so they've come up with an interesting approach that they developed these SCI blocks, a family of RF components, modules, and subsystems, and they deliver RF signal fidelity in small modular building blocks with plug-and-play architectures, and they're so cell aligned. So a really good development on their part. What do we have for uh, tech briefs? Well, we had a full roster of tech briefs in the supplement. Uh, we had SignalHound introducing a USB-C real-time spectrum analyzer and monitoring receiver that operates to 14 and a half gigahertz. Exodus Advanced Communications announced an 8 kilowatt amplifier system for testing L and S-band radars. Uh, Posternock announced a range of adapters that go to 67 gigahertz and 170 degrees C operating temperature. Uh, an air event looked at measuring dynamic range using their 330 gigahertz frequency extenders. Uh, and that gets more important as we march towards terahertz frequencies. And turning to the news and keeping with the A&D theme, BAE Systems announced that they have received a five-year contract from Lockheed Martin to sustain the ANALR-94 Advanced Digital Electronic Warfare System for the F-22 Raptor. Under the contract, BAE Systems will continue to manage the EW system repairs and upgrades, supplier logistics, test equipment maintenance, and provide depot-level spares and engineering support to maintain the F-22 EW readiness. So I also saw that EPIRUS and University of Oklahoma's Advanced Radar Research Center announced an $8.16 million grant from the Office of Naval Research, and this is a collaborative effort for a three-year project that will try to dramatically enhance the field of the phased array radars and output power for all digital solid state rays. The research aims to determine the ability to increase the transmitted long distance power density of the phased arrays to overcome radar range limitations and counter the growing threat of unmanned aerial systems. As we've seen in Ukraine, that's a very important thing. Eric, what did you see in the news? Yeah, so uh, keeping with the theme, the U.S. Coast Guard awarded Hensel follow-on contract worth about $10 million for its TRS 3D multi-mode naval radar. So not a giant contract, but notable in that the radar uses GAN and solid-state emitter technology, so that drumbeat of GAN into radars continues. Uh, I also saw a release from Aronia talking about what they're doing with drone detection systems and jammers, and as drones become an increasingly important part of military strategy, 
uh, that's becoming a big area of interest. And uh, turning to events, Eric and I just returned from the European Microwave Week in Berlin, which was a great success. What I like about European Microwave Week is in addition to the three co-located conference, they also have a defense, space, and security forum. They have a automotive forum and a 5G to 6G forum. So that really adds a system point of view to the event and includes a lot of the OEMs that you don't typically see at these conferences. Uh, European Microwave Week also really involves the whole ecosystem from components to full systems, so you really get a good point of view. Uh, the exhibition was sold out with more than 300 companies, and unlike IMS, the EUMW also has a truly international representation of companies, so very balanced between Asia, Europe, and the U.S. And uh, Microwave Journal hosted their annual Lunch and Learn session on the Defense Forum. And the talks given there were testing for coexistence in crowded and congested RF environments by Rodan Schwartz. And we also had how key technologies are simplifying system design and improving connectivity today and beyond given by Corvo. So that was a great session. And the two things that really stood out to me in the exhibition on the product side were the OTA testing setup to 220 gigahertz that was put together by Anritsu and MPI Corporation. And it had a robotic arm that moved the... Uh, receiver around. So a really unique system. And there's also a dual band setup that was delivering 127 gigabit per second data transfer rate using D and H bands. And that was put together by Keysight and Virginia Diodes. So two really cutting edge products that we saw there. Eric, how about you for the event? Yeah, Pat, it was a good show. Uh, lots of energy and discussion taking place on the show floor. And I was also impressed with the number of booths that were demonstrating some sort of high frequency setup either over the air or waveguide, and even in a couple of cases, cable-connected ports. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, further evidence that the industry is headed towards terahertz frequencies. I was also impressed of some, by some of the newer, I hesitate to call them startups, uh, but the new semiconductor companies like Gallium Semi, Indy Semiconductor, Altam RF, uh, and along with industry giant Wind Semiconductors, and they're all doing really interesting leading-edge things. Uh, and just as a reminder, EDICon Online takes place every Wednesday in October, covering topics in RF, microwave, signal integrity, power integrity, and EMC EMI. Registration is open, so please go to edicononline.com and sign up today. And that wraps up this episode. Our sponsor is RFMW, a technical distributor of RF microwave products, and now power management. When you start your next design, consider their multiple product lines. And remember, as a member of the industry, a subscription to Microwave Journal is free, so please visit our site and subscribe today if you're not already a reader. Thanks for watching, and join us next time for another Frequency Matters.